we were first years, we were living in the slums, I don't know if you still call it the slums, the bottom part of B block, double rooms, and in fact some of us were six, seven per room because there was only two table fans going around. And, uh, and our first introduction was in, in the second week of July, I think, late one night there was this banging on the door. And we later figured out that the whole batch of 76, all the guys were there. They had obviously been at some prayer meeting because they were quite full of spirit. <laughs> And they were celebrating their fifth anniversary and they wanted to, you know, share the good tidings with us. And we were little like the first year. And I remember this intense conversation between Subroto Day and Prabhupada Chatterjee on how he should study hard and become a Bhalo doctor. <laughs> so thanks guys for being such good final years for us. Now, not only do I belong to the batch of 81, actually I'd like to know, how many here are medical students? Can the first years put up their hands? Okay, second years? Third? Fourth? And fifth and beyond, it's okay. We don't understand. Okay? <laughs> Not only do I belong to the Battle of 76, I also belong to... I also belong to the greatest house that ever existed, Skara House. I yeah. Always has been, always will be the greatest. Are there any Cochrane House people out here? Okay, so obviously things have changed. See, in those days, you didn't acknowledge this in public. <laughs> in those days, Cochrane was known for having. Do they make house t-shirts now? Cochrane was known for having the worst possible teacher. There was one year, and normally it house teachers get passed on to Mesh Sambi. There was one year, when it to Mesh Sambi, refused to wear Cochrane to Just because they're families, don't think we have, don't have standards. So I'm going to spend the first few minutes. I was said that I'd be talking to the students. I said, what about this? I said, speak to the students. So here I am, I'm speaking, your students, I've got some stuff. I'll start talking a bit about my work in case any of you are interested in psychiatry and then we'll get on to something probably more important or interesting. Okay, I work in a place called Ballarat, which is Victoria's. Victoria's is something state in Australia. You know MC Melbourne. MCD is the center of the sporting universe. Melbourne and Ballarat is 100 k's to the west of uh, Melbourne. And I'm, I've been in private practice for the last 11 years. Ballarat is a Gold Rush City, you know, it's been probably more famous 100 years ago than it is now. It's been written about by Arthur Conan Doyle and Mark Twain and things like that. And it's got classic Victorian architecture, a lake, was actually the site of uh, the rowing events for the Melbourne 56 Olympics. That's Lake Wendy Reed. And, you know, they're probably be having some rowing events again next year. And obviously, Australian wildlife, a couple of kangaroos. One on the left is sponsored. <laughs> I just want to keep things fair to everyone. <laughs> That's my practice. Most psychiatrists tend to work by themselves. It protects from their challenges. You're not working in large group practice. And I've been in those rooms for a long time. I did my MBBS here, diploma, MD, FMD, and then I went to Australia with my fellowship of the Royal Australian Museum College. And after a few years in the public system, I pretty much got sick of the politics, so I moved on. What's my work like? Most of my work is anxiety and mood disorders. I have an interest in oncology, so I do a lot of consultation years on work for the local oncologist I did care. And as a part of anxiety and mood disorders, sometimes it's a very interesting patient as well. And over the years, there's been a few borderlines which have been challenging but interesting. And one very interesting lady with multiple personality disorders. So if you get too excited, even with multiple personalities, you can only build them once. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my rooms. Interesting paintings, Van Gogh and Dali, both of whom there were questions raised about their sanity. And Salvador Dali is famously reported to have said, the only difference between me and a bad man is that I'm not mad. <laughs> But I'm not really here to talk about my work, because honestly, that's just a small part of who we all are. I'm here here to celebrate my membership of one of the greatest 
bunch of people I've ever met. She's about to wait one. And this batch is in a class of their own. And this was an article published in any game. You know, and I the great contributions of the of to the field of medicine. Okay? I like to put references up there in case. See, whenever someone speaks, there's always. Do you know what a CFITA is? It's a cheap fellow in the audience who will say, no, that's not true. There's a reference. Don't believe me. Let me call Kachichov Bolsa. Kachichov Bolsa. Anyone know who this is? Sorry? Prabir Chatterjee. It is Prabir Chatterjee. <laughs> but actually, this is Nostradamus. And Nostradamus had written some stuff about my class, which I will. And he wrote in French, so again, I translate this for the sake of the songs of students. Okay? So, Kamalani Kakramat Eya, which is in the year 1981, in class, very special, Vyandra, a special class will come five years before Haley. Remember Haley's song in the UK? Avec les you, Cherry, Zaki, Priya, Lenny, Roy, Matthew, and Gita Zak. C'est la plus belle batch de la Santon et bien possiblement le millennium. The greatest batch of its time and possibly the millennium. Again, we believe in evidence-based medicine. <laughs> 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 we said he did some work, he's known for other things. Uh, and Boston, he was known for some other things. <laughs> I've been very blessed because I've chosen a profession that I love. I think I'm reasonably okay at it. And it's given me the opportunity to travel, see places. And one of the highlights of my life was meeting was here Stephen Hawking with a small group of people in Cambridge a few years ago. As you know, he's the chair of the Newtonian um, chair of physics at Cambridge. And in the short time we had, Stephen did say this. He said, you know, we all know this. He did say, God does not play dice with the universe. Okay? But he also told me this. He said, the match of 81 is a class that comes around once in 4.5 in the universe. <laughs> And CMC should be that bit I couldn't get. <laughs> I couldn't really understand that. So kind of <laughs> if you don't believe me, that's a close-up of him. Also, what did he say about my life? Uh. Actually, nothing. You. <laughs> You may find it hard to place 30 years ago what life was like, so I'm trying to give you a bit of a time, uh, or whatever you call it, okay? We were the first batch of the pre-med course. Previously, medicine was five and a half years for most people. Some of course like to stay longer. And for us, it was four and a half years. That was when the Royal Wedding was. See, 1981, we joined Royal Wedding 1. 2006, 2011, we are back, Royal Wedding 2. Connection. <laughs> Possibly. I know what the great Dr. Jane used to say, association doesn't mean causation, but it anyway. The number one movie of the time was Raiders of the Lost Ark. The number one song was Kim Khan's Very Daily Size, which I'm sure many of students have been heard of Kim Khan's. <coughs> Queen released the song that year, which was to be kind of theme for our exams. It's another one by the dust. And it was the lyrics we got very familiar with over time. And Dr. Pulley Moon. Sadly, he's no more. He was a wonderful principal and a gentleman. Uh, he took over as principal when we joined. 82, we moved into a second senior. And this was our first appearance at Interclass Music Com. And I think we performed brilliantly to rave reviews. Time for the financial disaster. <laughs> Newsweek said, I got back for some <laughs> <laughs> we 
Hey, 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 and India won the Cricket World Cup last year. Again, batch of 81 in men's hostel, India wins the World Cup. We are back to 2011, India wins the World Cup. <laughs> Though I don't think we should mention the cricket right now. That was very interesting because in those days, men's hostel had the only TV there was. Okay? Black and white TV, up a low common room, there were about 200 people there, including God knows what what other glowings came in from Baga and everybody else who watched it, including some girls from across the road. And one of the highlights of our time was that. But later on, you know, obviously women's hospital doesn't need to be outdone, so they went and bought themselves a TV, I think in time for the LA Olympics in 84. But there was something wrong with that TV, because you know in those days, Dhrut Darshan would start with a little thing that would go round and round. And their TV, when they turned it on, this thing would come on round and round, and after two minutes it would freeze. <laughs> this happened for two or three days. Now, women suspects, they are, they're not silly, they're smart. After three days of this, they knew something was up. <laughs> so, uh, so, so half the, uh, what do you call it, their uh, student association, general secretary, president, treasurer, secretary for makeup, secretary for three years. I mean, they used in those days, they have a junior proctor. Do they have a junior proctor now? Okay, this time Junior Proctor, which is a position appointed to ring the bell for co-op, right? <laughs> See, men's hostel, you would just say, watch and ring the bell and ring the bell. <laughs> so, you know, it was all bunch, so they carried this TV and then, there was this store, shop then for Bombay Air Freight. Is it still around? <laughs> so, these girls on 6.30 bus take the TV to Bombay Air Freight. That guy takes one look at it and says, Madam, your TV is not your microwave. <laughs> There may be some doubts about the authenticity of the song. Not many, but there's some such ones. Because I think with these girls in my so. Now, around later that year, we made, a, at least the guys made a huge comment to actually discover there was this textbook called Satosta. Do you all use it now? No. It was a farm quality textbook. It was late in the year. We suddenly discovered, we always thought there was one volume. Second, late in the year, we discovered It's a minor problem, but, you know, as a Bible class, God never tests you more than you can bear. We got to that. 84. Again, major cricketing dilemma. You know, in 19, uh, India was in the Benson and Hedges World Series final. The game was late for forensic exam. What do we do? Study for forensic exam or watch India the cricket final? We watch cricket. Exams come every six months. It's only happened every four years. <laughs> Still pass. I do not recommend this. This does not mean we got away with it. It doesn't mean this is accepted procedural policy for the making of a good job. We don't have many OBEs or Gatos or MBEs, but we do hold a batch in the Limca Book of Records for the first batch to successfully ride a bicycle in the men's house form. The gentleman is not here today, but if he was here, we would say you would so much on the ride. 85 was OBE residential, an introduction to childbirth. Interesting story then, one of my classmates was rather naive, watching his first delivery, gets pretty rattled, and he said, Enana, in game to work with him. So, maybe not. And after that, he was a bit embarrassed. So he said, now I was there, and he said, Mommy, hey, don't tell anyone. I said, you can, you can trust me. Uh, to this day, 
the message I want to give you, my two students, is really, I know you're here to study medicine, but these are the best years of your lives. Because you will never get these years back. Enjoy it. You will never get these years back. Don't think, ah, oh, but I get sponsored to come back again. <laughs> 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 Where to next? I thought I will get a little bit into if I knew then what I know now. But I think the first thing I would say is if I knew then what I know now, there's a certain classmate who borrowed five bucks from me first year and he said he'd give back to me on Monday. I was in the game of that. If I knew then what I know now, I probably would have studied lower than the anatomy because they say came from up with <laughs> But that raises a certain problem because what if you later got a patient with say claudication and lower limb? You can't say far apart and if the upper limb, thorax can't be removed. So, yeah. but what I'd really like to say is things I know for certain now that I kind of suspected back then, and this is the next message I want to give you guys. There's more to medicine than studying medicine. Okay, in CMC you focus on academics, you focus on studying facts and listing 10 branches of the superior and inferior and centric lateral artery or corners, whatever, and, and list all these things and write them out and you forget them your name. These are not the things that stick with you. Things that stick with you are far deeper than that. It's more than the knowledge of processes and procedures because, honestly, remember those things about if you give 100 monkeys 100 typewriters and give them infinite number of years, one of them will turn out from people as a Shakespeare. I'm sure if you gave monkeys enough time, with facts and made them talk them over and over again, eventually they can also uh, take the right answers in exams. There's actually a couple going to school. <laughs> well, again, one open, one sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> medicine is far more than retention. It's an art and science, and it is the art of medicine that is actually, I think, we don't focus enough on. And while you're an undergraduate, I'd like you to think about everything, your people and communication skills. And this is where a balanced lifestyle, an interest not just in studies and books, but extracurricular activities, and I mean legitimate ones, you know, sports, music, art, theater, and so on. Take on leadership roles. You know, I, I was the editor of the talk for a year. I learned a few things. People in general body meetings will ask you difficult questions, and later on this is useful. Over the years I've had colleagues, you know, one of them, you know, he was fine to look at, but when he opened his mouth, you realize he's a complete idiot. You just didn't have the paperwork proof. And when they are, they are, you have to get along with these people. And you get training for this without knowing it. In uh, gentle body meetings, when you have to stand up and defend your budget or things like that. And these are positions that take up time, but you also learn some skills. You also learn to deal with negativity. Uh, years ago, I worked with a psychiatrist who was very negative. In fact, I think the only thing positive about him was his BDR, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you learn to deal with these people, you know? Because you have to in life, you don't get to choose your place. Play sport. Because in medicine, not all your patients are going to get better. Some are going to get better, some are not. So, best of your efforts. Sports teaches you how to lose, and how to lose gracefully. Okay, so you have to deal with these people. And as I said, it's really important because there's so much you can learn
there's more to life than medicine, and this is something that I've realized over the last 20, 30 years. Medicine is a small part of life, but happiness is more, more than this. And over the years, I've treated people with depression, and you find you've treated the clinical depression, but they're still miserable, they're still unhappy. And the issue is that priorities are wrong, they're trapped in different situations, and they're actually seeking other things than happiness. So, you'll all be successful, work hard, might be heads of departments, or win Nobel Prizes, and all these other things. But just remember this, even if you win the rat race, you're still alive. Okay? So the thought I'd like to put to you guys today, is while you're still in the formative years, is think about finding happiness. And it really doesn't matter what everyone else is doing, you know. You focus on the really important things in life. Are the really important things in life publishing? Or perhaps, like in the last three days, 30 of my classmates have taken time off at significant financial cost to get together. And I know years later, this is what I will remember, not what academic achievements I may or may not have had this year. So think about your own lives, what's really important, and finding happiness. And there's no real benchmark that you have to meet that this is the definition of success. And listen to the drama inside you, don't be afraid to match the drama. Of course, if you're really hearing the kind of drama, <laughs> maybe it's like a different issue. Uh, okay, I can come up with a few names. <coughs> and while you're here, don't let your studies interfere.